Patty. All right. Can you hear me well? Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. So I have started recording, Christopher. Um, everyone, I have Christopher Munson back. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't do a video today, but we do have him on the telephone while we have a little bit of his time with his hectic schedule. So, um, Christopher, welcome back. Um, a lot of people have many questions for you, and um, I wanted to start off with um, just seeing how you're doing today, and we can just jump right into a couple of questions while I have you for a few moments. How you doing? Oh, I'm all right. You know, I'm feeling great. Had a good day with the wife. Um, got checked up today at the doctor. Had a little appointment, but I think it's just pointing towards probably just uh vitamin issue that might cause me to have any kind of uh, tiredness but either way point being everything seems to be well with my health so that and in and of itself especially nowadays is a good sign especially whenever you get the sniffles and people start to think oh no now he needs to call out of work <laughs> oh. right i totally totally get it <laughs> mm -hmm. make sure you're taking oh, yeah. um some high dose of vitamin c that'll um can you get the microwave sweetie um high doses of vitamin c that'll kind of give you uh, a boost of energy thank you yeah no it's, it's definitely something uh i need to recall every once in a while so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well i want to jump right into it um, um we kind of left things um kind of open you kind of blew people's mm -hmm. mind about the carrington event and um your family and so on and a lot of people really kind of wanted to know more about your family, the Collins, and just um, how powerful they are and um, exactly what, um, you know, where are they now in uh, position. They also wanted to know about California and the Ring of Fire. Um, so, um, if you could jump in and kind of get into sure. whichever one you want to start off with. Well, I, I guess I'll, I'll try to keep it in order so that way it's easier for me to, you know, uh, carry on the conversation in a more, of, I guess, artful way. Mm -hmm. So, with my family, the, uh, the Collins family, I don't really have that much of a, I guess you could say, idea on a lot of them just because the way that a lot of blue bloods are is like they're not very personal they're usually very impersonal mm -hmm. everything is just kind of like a show you know what i mean gotcha. you just imagine politics but at home <laughs> absolutely i can't so, I, I couldn't imagine actually <laughs> yeah i know it's 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 a trip i'll tell you what like you have to learn to read between the lines with these people um for example you know um, here's just an example of one of the um, holidays I spent over there for Christmas. They invite us to, you know, the Christmas dinner every once in a while. And oftentimes, it's just to show off their wealth. And um, I remember one point, they, they gave us some gifts. And I remember she, my uh, aunt, Sharon, mm -hmm. she was like, well, this is this gift I got you from that store that you go to, Walmart. <laughs> like yeah l l let me let me take this any which way in a positive manner <laughs> oh, man. i know exactly what you mean you're you're talking down to me but trying to give me <laughs> the same right right so it, it's the thing about um a, a lot of these politicians i wish people like if you're going to watch news which i highly you know i suggest you don't if you do look at it really scrutinize everything being said oftentimes they're not talking to you they're talking about you to to the uh, other heads, if you will, mm -hmm. and most of it's just propaganda. Gotcha. So that way, you know, the, the main message is being caught by those who need to know, and then everyone else is just confused by this divisive programming. Mm-hmm. No, I can I can dig it. I definitely understand what you mean. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm sure Thanksgiving was always weird. <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> it's never a dull moment. But then again, I have an interesting thought on that. I don't know if you've noticed, but it just seems to me like there's a, a lot of society nowadays that seem to be more irritable, more commonly. And it's not just seems to be like uh, just the stresses of the day, but it just seems to be more prevalent. It's like most of us are just more prone to being angry. Well, I mean, we're living this existence. And I got to tell you, the, the, the government and this system has given a whole lot of people a lot of reasons to be angry. That's true. 
So, and everybody's feeling it from so many different angles. You know, everybody has has a different aspect of it that it's affected them. So, so no, listen, there's a lot of pissed off people right now. A lot. You know, a lot of people's family members are dead. Um, a lot of people have lost their children. That's true. They've lost their livelihood. Um, so it's just a very troubling time. But the wonderful thing is, is that people like you and I, and uh, my good friend Santos are out here still giving out truth and giving out this information that everyone needs to hear. A positive type of force to go against the negative influences. So exactly. yes, no, you're absolutely right. Now when it comes to the influence of my family, I can't really exactly speak to the level of control that they have, but I can at least say what I do recall from the time that I have spent with them and listened to them, spoken with them, and hear them gloat about. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. My aunt that I, I mentioned with the very wealthy home, several million dollars worth, that she, not that she built entirely, last I checked, but at least she uh, took and then altered its original form, and now it's just beautiful. She's an architect, albeit very, very intellectual, very intelligent individual, uh, very cold, very greedy, very self-centered. Um, but I, I digress on the matter. Um, she is the grand architect, or at least last I recall, years ago, she was the grand architect of the Smithsonian. Mm. And I find it interesting just because um, she, uh, from what she told me, she had, she had she invited me and my brother to come and uh, spend time at their, uh, I, think, I think it was the NASA uh, space 3D thing you step into these little booths and they close and you can experience what the astronauts went through the irony of it all being that we're the grandsons or grand uh, nephews of um, freaking Michael Collins that went to the moon mm -hmm. <laughs> and interestingly enough she would gloat about how she got that installed in there to you know show people whatnot and it was interesting how she decided after she decided to open it she wanted us to come check it out for free so, I couldn't tell if that was just a gift or just kind of like a mocking thing, because it's more like, you know, they're, they're in direct relation. We're just kind of these little mud bloods coming over, the poor folk. <laughs> so, let me, ask, <laughs> let me ask you a question. What are your thoughts about everyone talking about the moon landing and all that stuff being fake, all that being Hollywood production? And basically, everyone's saying that it's literally physically impossible for them to have the knowledge to be able to do it. Because NASA is now saying that they don't even have the technology anymore. They, they somehow... They somehow lost it, yes, I, I recall. Yeah, well, from what my, my personal beliefs on the situation is to generally... I, I try to get a lot of my knowledge from what my grandfather explained to me. Mm -hmm. And that might seem like... Uh, perhaps odd to some people. I obviously, I look out and I read and I uh, listen to various people out there like yourself mm -hmm. to discover more and more information because oftentimes we try to share so we can help each other. Correct. And I've come to the conclusion that from what my grandfather said, short to the point, they lied. Um, my grandfather said, and I quote, uh, on the topic of Michael Collins, my granduncle, he said, he's a liar. That's all he said to me. And generally speaking, my grandfather is not... He's not a liar. ...to <laughs> remark on character unless he honestly believes, without a shadow of a doubt, that in that moment, you know, that's what it is. However, usually he also follows up with other things. So when it came to that, I think he just had a little bit of respect for him. Because if you do look at it, he was one of the very first ones to just drop away from the interviews. Mm -hmm. So I think he, from what that my grandfather said and the lack of what he said, perhaps is more showing that Michael Collins did regret taking part in that lie because that does stain your honor. Man, yeah, listen, they had the whole world fooled. You mm -hmm. understand that like a lot of people are and some people haven't even come to terms with the fact that they made a whole production about it. And it's crazy because um, Stanley Kubrick, um, the, the, the movie The Shining, that was literally him exposing that the whole thing was a fraud because he was a part of the production. Yep. So, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, that's generally how it goes. Funny note on that one, my grandfather told me that oftentimes the characters of various films are actually 
based off the various agents that they've had serving them. So that way that if they ever wanted to, uh, like, I guess you could say, you know, talk well about an agent, they can just throw it in there as a hero character. And usually that ends up being the ones that are heinous evil people or based off of historical people or whatever and they twist it just like uh, that one uh, what was that film that came out recently the woman king oh god i didn't watch it because i can't stand <laughs> i can't do it i just i just can't yeah. bring myself to watch things that i know are blatant lies yeah such hypocrisy it's a stain to the honor of those in africa as well and i think that's something a lot of us have to understand nowadays it's like someone like myself i honor the traditions of my forefathers by knowing the history of my bloodline and i think it's absolutely shameful that they would take such a essentially a, such essential history that has been almost obliterated over time by various reasons and you know happenstances and uh it's just it's terrible that they would do that i mean for crying out loud well let's take the slavers and make them look like the freedom fighters <laughs> oh wow oh, See, i don't even know the context of the movie i might have to just go ahead and white knuckle it and watch it because um you don't <laughs> even have to watch it you can just look up the history so essentially the name of the tribe and the name of the warrior group are historically accurate the issue was is the uh pretty much everything else was just like twisted like, for example, they, they tried saying, oh, well, the white guys were there to just colonize, but in actuality, historically, they were actually there to try to eliminate slavery. Um, then there is also the the use of the tribe and to go and get slaves in actual history. They would actually go and be the ones to go capture hundreds, if not thousands of slaves in order to sell to the Europeans at the shore. So the, the complex, just inherent, just hypocrisy is just too much. Well, <laughs> what they're doing is they're trying to hold on to this whole slavery thing, see, because they know that it's come all out of uh, under wraps. They know that mm -hmm. too many black people, especially American black people, know that their ancestry mm -hmm. does not go necessarily go back to Africa. All of us are not connected to ancestors from Africa. The majority yep. of the black Americans here are from the indigenous people here. And if that comes out on the mainstream, just like the moon landing being a hoax, um, mm. they've lost complete control. So the media, you see in the media put out all of this, uh, all these lies about the vaccine, about the moon landing, about flat, uh, the earth being a globe. Everything has fallen apart. And slavery is a key in keeping that stuff together. So they got to put out these big Hollywood productions because we know Hollywood is the one who really runs the world right now. So, Well, at the very least, they, they run the aspect of illusion. Now, we have to understand that this isn't just as simple as just a political party system. It's something much more deeper, something more ancient. Mm -hmm. An evil that has transcended generations, and it's been spoken to us through the Bible, and when it came to uh, the book of Revelation about those who would pretend that they are something that they are not, simply trying to mismanage the word, and that they would infiltrate the churches and everything else, you can take that on a much more philosophical, grand scheme of things, because that's exactly how it's treated. The irony of the movie Purge and like that series, they mm -hmm. actually show it as more of a religion to themselves almost a patriotic duty to themselves to do such evil things to us well the Vatic so, the vatican is a complete is, different society yeah the vatican is responsible for all of that like the vatican has so many hidden secrets and and documents and archives that they've keeping mm -hmm. they're keeping hidden from the whole public and they're the ones responsible for the majority of this so when people try to act like politics and the church and the science aren't all connected, they are all one. They're all working together for the same agenda. Yes. So, so yeah, that's we the the people who are watching our channel. They're they're very much familiar with just how despicable um, this whole grand scheme of things are. Um, Speaking of which, mm -hmm. my uh, my other aunt. Uh, I have Sharon, uh, Sharon and Karen, okay. ironically. So, Karen, she, uh, well, she goes out, she travels the world, she likes going to, um, 
places in like southeastern Asia and all those other places. And uh, actually, she's had dealings with Dalai Lama. The crazy thing about that, <laughs> and I remember, I remember one time that I was talking to my mom, and at one point she was, uh, she said, "Oh well, she knows his delights." And then I was just thinking to myself, like this guy said in an interview, he just eats plants, like a leaf. You know what I mean? So, like, what delight are you talking about? Because that sounded almost weird. Right. <laughs> right. So, and, and here's the thing, is her, she does not have any blood children. But she does have a child that, from what my mother said, she smuggled through Nepal. Wow. Yep. And he, and that's the thing, is, like, I remember seeing him, and I forget his name, but, you know, God forgive me for that, but, you know, he seemed like the right guy, but every single time I've ever met him at the family meetings, whenever he was there, he just always looked like he was petrified, like he was about to, like, I don't know, get in trouble or some shit. Man. <laughs> Did not seem well. Wow. My brother was kind of oblivious to it, but then again, you know, some people who follow the libtard narrative oftentimes are just oblivious to the obvious truth in front of their eyes. Yeah. No, it's um, always hidden in plain sight. We um, we we found a way. Humanity has found a way to um, ignore um, obvious um, torture that others are going through. We kind of just <clears throat> mask it and just act like it's not happening and just deal with our own lives. When we should probably just ask our cousin, "Hey, what's going on with you at home?" <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and, and that's interesting. You know, think of it all. It's like. Obviously, when I was learning all these things, it's as a child, so one would hope that there was just an actual positive meaning behind that. Oh, maybe it was just she brought him out of a ter- terrible country that was under the communist Chinese regime. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is, it's just the whole thing just seems complex, strange, and especially the, f- the, the way that they acted one time when I brought something up to them. So when I was a child, I remember when my... Uh, bipolar mother broke down one time she told me that she was um, uh, very much abused by her father not only physically but sexually Mm -hmm. but uh, so of course sustained to him and his honor on that one Mm -hmm. however as I do recall I remember bringing that up when I was probably like in middle school age probably like 6th grade or 7th grade I don't remember how old I was but I brought it up to them at a dinner and everyone was kind of around and it was just me and my two aunts in the kitchen because I asked them for a drink. And I forget, it was like Sprite or something. Either way, they looked at each other and they had the same look on their face. And then they both turned to look at me at the same time. And Corinne said, your mother oftentimes misremembers the past. Wow. And yep. And it was just, they both had the same exact look on their face. And I felt very cold. And I felt like the hair stand up on my arms. And I was like, yeah, time to turn around. Thank you for the drink. And just walked away. (laughs) Yeah, what do you do? What do you say when you know something is apparently very off here? Yep. So, if you can kind of get a glimpse of what I'm trying to paint for you, that's pretty much my backstory on that one. So, when it comes to their influence... You also have to understand, my Aunt Sharon, her daughter, got married in the French Embassy here in D.C. Or, excuse me, not here in the sense, like, I'm at D.C., I'm in New Hampshire. No, it's all good. I'm from the DMV, so I speak of D.C. like it's right around the corner, too. I'm from Baltimore, so I get it. Yeah, so you you understand, it's like, if you're going to be able to go and have it just get married in a place like that, yeah. I'm going to tell you, it is gilded. <laughs> it is beautiful. I felt so out of place. I was like, you know what? I feel like I'm the help here. <laughs> <laughs> and oftentimes, like, most of the wealthy that did attend would, like, stay far away from us. We were kind of, like, in the back corner somewhere. And my mother, you know, made us dress up all nice. But it wasn't nice enough for these guys. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no. So, point being, like, if you have that kind of... Uh, capabilities and for you know pennies to the dollar you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. you have some kind of influence and control so that's my extent of knowledge on that Mm -hmm. okay and um we really wanted to get back into the things that your grandfather was telling us now um if you could just um for the record give your grandfather's name again for anyone who may just be kind of getting on 
and um, exactly uh, what he did. And um, let's get into this um, Carrington event because people are really freaked out <laughs> about this. Yeah. Considering, oh, and another thing, when is your birthday? You said it's in March, right? Yes. What's the date? I gotta know. <laughs> March 15th, 1993. Oh, 15th. Okay. All right. I'm a Pisces, so I wanted to know if we were the same. I'm the 8th. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I was born in the Ides of March. March. Yes, so, yes, uh, you Anthony, uh, perhaps the poetic justice of it all. Sometimes I like to feel like I'm um, the sixth temperature honest, if you will, of the situation. <laughs> okay. But at the same time, it's just the the irony of it all is, uh, from what I learned from my grandfather, our origin, if we're possibly related to Julius Caesar, <laughs> way down the line. That's so, my son's name, uh, actually, Julius. Mm, yeah. yeah uh, I named uh, my son, my, my actually my last son, Maximus, but <laughs> you named him uh, Julius is a beautiful name. Yes. It's a powerful, strategic name. He it is. Has intellect and wisdom, a hint of cunning. Yes, he's all of those things and more, trust me. <laughs> But yes, but go on. We want to know about the Ring of Fire, and we want to know more about California. Like, you know, what is it that we really should be expecting? Well, interestingly enough, um, perhaps we should probably jump to that just so we can at least get that off the table for people. Yeah. So, all of that which you can probably expect is what I mentioned in the last episode. And, you know, it's just obviously I'm. You know, like, I, I was only told these things from my grandfather, so it's not like he can really elaborate too much on the situation without just being just, you know, painting the whole thing for me. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, this man was blunt, mm -hmm. short, and to the point. Mm -hmm. So, I, as I said, you know, it's trying to, you know, pass that on, like, information-wise. It's it's almost like trying to go to, like, the, the let's say, uh, what's it, the scientist's name that... Uh, had that disease where he couldn't speak and couldn't move and all that other stuff. You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to think. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawkins? Yes, that one. Okay. It's a lot like that. It's like trying to decipher that. Not in the sense that he is that complex, but more along the lines of what he says is complex because it requires in-depth thinking. You know, his birthday is the same date as Galileo. <laughs> Interestingly enough, that that's interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, these these types of people seem to always be born on these the specific past. dates, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, all this plays together, you know. Yes. Um, so continue. For example, like my uh, my youngest, he was born on the Green Corps birthday, and here's the cool thing: is uh, he was born exactly ten years after I got my EGA from the Marine Corps boot camp. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. So a, I named him Maximus. That's a that's a fantastic name, by the way, and he's yeah, beautiful. And he, and the irony is that his middle name is Orion, but he's a Scorpio. Oh, a Scorpio! <laughs> My man is a Scorpio. <laughs> yes, very playful little guy. So, yes, but yes. So uh, when it comes to the, I guess the horrific situation of the Great Cataclysm, from what he was telling me, is ultimately the safest place, at least in the United States, is the East Coast mostly towards the north mm -hmm. um, or areas in the Midwest but that was he said would get very shaky very quickly yeah Edgar Casey says that Virginia Beach for some reason is supposed to be safe uh, I've you know perhaps I don't know I'm not a seismologist or anything like that mm -hmm. I just know from what he told me <laughs> yeah. you know, the main thing is he painted a picture where most of the destruction is going to be on the west coast and, and so when it came to the Ring of Fire, it's that um, it's that big, big, giant plate. So from what he was telling me is the, the plates themselves are going to um, grind into each other. One's going to dip down so low that it's going to cause some kind of schism in the, uh, in the earth. And perhaps they might end up trying to trigger something explosively-wise just so they can make it keep going further. Mm-hmm. So, so the point being is they, they really want that to, you know, essentially become a thing because it would cause such a cataclysm that would force everyone eastward. So anyone um, that survives. We um we have some indications that the pipelines in America are gonna be hit and that could cause something like that. 
it's, that's possible. I'm not someone who would know, obviously, because, <laughs> you know, this is just something my grandfather told me when I was younger. It's not something that he knew in the sense of the direct planning. He just mm -hmm. knew of the uh, options that were on the table and the main ideas that they were going to go with. Absolutely. So from what they, from what he was told, telling me is these operations they go on, he said it's more like thinking like skipping rocks in water. You know, mm -hmm. which situation or event that they toss out, how mm -hmm. many times is it going to reflect off the populace or the, the, uh, the vast consciousness that is the American people and other people in the world? What kind of effects they can have and the ripple effects that they can utilize to their advantage in various means. Mm -hmm. So, they, as of what my grandfather would say, it's never a one-to-one. -one. They prefer multiple outcomes, even if it's negative, because then they can mismanage the media on the situation to fit their narrative. So, did he ever speak of any kind of machine or um, underground source that they'll be able to trigger this? And did he say where it is geographically because i know you're saying most of the destruction will happen on the west coast but is there some place in particular that would be able to cause something like this that he knew of no not not exactly he just mentioned the ring of fire and the fact that it would shift in such a way during the uh you know solar event that would thrust the poles and whatnot and he said he didn't know whether or not it was going to be from the actual thrusting of the poles or if it was going to be from the asteroid that would nearly hit us. Hmm. Interesting. So from what he was telling me is this is just a cycle that they've come across essentially from looking at all the different ancient civilizations across the world that they have pulled and picked and dug up and everything else apart. They've discovered that ultimately it's a cycle that just constantly happens which is also why a lot of these you know um satanic people in power oftentimes don't really care that the answer of their actual destruction is literally right before their face and they just are so vain that they continue on anyways mm -hmm. thinking they can survive so let me ask you this do you believe that it's going to be a, some sort of natural phenomenon or do you believe that it's something systematically that's going to be triggered a little of both you gotta understand these people like to mix it up yeah, no, I know, because funny enough, you know, I just learned that earthquakes aren't real. They're creating these earthquakes. They have earthquake projectors. I'm here in Mexico, and Mexico has earthquakes on two dates. Two dates, September 7th and September 19th. Well, this last September 19th, a friend of mine was uh, running out to grab a couple of things for me. And he told me that he had to wait until the earthquake simulation was over. All the malls and everything were kind of like temporarily shut down until they did their little simulation. And I said, what do you mean the simulation? He said, oh, because in Mexico, two times on this date, we had an earthquake. So they're doing this for precautions. Well, who do you know? They actually had an earthquake on this very same date. So they're literally creating these earthquakes. So yeah, well, when you can alter the weather, you can do a lot of different things. Exactly. Often, uh, so oftentimes, from what you know, the, uh, the the people don't recognize nowadays. I mean, some people are becoming aware to it. It's becoming more common to say and hear people say Tesla, but maybe that's just a sad fact of why they've created this company named Tesla, so they can pull away from the actual truth of the individual in question an individual who understood that the world and reality to which we exist in is about energy and frequency and free and it, it explains why the spirit has such power in this and something that people neglect when they don't utilize their faith yeah absolutely and do you know any are you familiar with cern and the higgs boson Yes, my grandfather explained to me that CERN is actually a tool that they're trying to utilize to break through the veil into the other dimension. Okay. Explain. The other side, uh, as in the demons. They're hmm. trying to break through to hell. That's what I heard. I heard something very similar to that. That's why I was wondering if you had any, any knowledge about that. Because you know that they just um, 
ran the machine again, I think, sometime in July. I think they just did it again. And um, uh, you noticed that things are kind of strange. Uh, since yeah, then? yeah, yeah. I do, yeah. and you know, I also know around that same time, the Georgia Godstones mysteriously got blown up too. You know, oftentimes with a good ritual, when you know it goes your way, the table explodes. Maybe not exactly in the sense of being directly in that means, but oftentimes when it comes to the demonic. You know, the sign of your wish being granted tends to be something terrifying and evil, equal and of the same. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some people like to say, oh, good, good riddance. But I agreed, you know, I don't care for it. the evil in this world and their markings they leave. But at the same time, I'm the type of person who does not want to get rid of history and so readily forget what happened. Mm -hmm. Because I'd like our ancestors to teach our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and so on and so forth, why it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, often when it comes to the Civil War, people forget uh, many different things. You know, for example, when it came to Abraham Lincoln, he didn't really give a goddamn about anybody that he was freeing. Of it was more along the lines that it was a tool that he was trying to utilize to essentially separate the power from the hierarchy in the South, so that way he can then send his carpetbaggers and everything else in order to take over. They have came up with their own form of slavery with debt, always paying people too little, always keeping them in squalor so that at the very least they can keep scrounging among themselves in order to kind of make to the top of the barrel like crabs. Mm -hmm. So, ultimately speaking, that has been a system that they kind of based for the American empire that they started after that. You know, people forget we started as a republic, mm -hmm. but what happens to a republic when there's a civil war? <laughs> exactly. It always turns into an oligarchy. Absolutely. And that's what happened. Absolutely. So. Let me ask you this. Being as though your aunt um, worked for the Smithsonian and, and may possibly still, I'm not sure, um, did you ever hear anything about the Smithsonian literally being created to hide the giants and all of that thing? Like, yep. Okay. My grandfather mentioned that. He said that David Rockefeller himself spent many millions and possibly more than that just to send out archaeologists, teams, hunters, if you will, anybody to just go and find these things, confiscate it, and bring it to the Smithsonian and other locations that they can worship. Or at the very least, they can go and destroy it, so at the very least that they can contain what they want and destroy what they want us not to know. What do you know about Antarctica? Have you heard about what's their, what they're hiding there? An ancient civilization that once existed before the flood. Yeah. Can you do you have any more detail about that? Because I mean, we all we all have that that kind of basic knowledge. But like, did he go into detail about actually what's there? I mean, we all know that it's supposed to be lush green lands there and all that kind of stuff. But you know, why is it so heavily protected? What is actually there? Um, it's more along the lines of preparing for this great cataclysm, classic, excuse me, great cataclysmic event. Because you think, you know, as we mentioned that the flipping of the poles, that means that warmth is going to reset to different areas of the globe. Mm -hmm. And as I said, he did mention that there is going to be more warmth going up and down. So perhaps, just perhaps, it's more like they're trying to prepare for the unthawing down there. Yes, there are green lands, or at least potential for it there. Mm -hmm. The problem is that people don't understand. It's like, yeah, it is frozen over. They protect it because obviously they want to maintain it. They want to prevent people like us from going there. If it's constantly a you know, military and diplomatic dispute, then of course, then we are not going to be permitted there just for the sake of our own safety. Yeah, that's what they always say, our own safety. It's too much for us to handle, right? Mm -hmm. It's just too much oh. for us to handle the truth. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Gotta, gotta love that message, you know, because it really was, although, albeit, you know, it was very specific to the movie that it was, it was a very, very powerful message that we can use for everything else. 
at least in meme form. <laughs> one question. Oh, my husband's here. He wants to interject and ask you a couple of questions. He's right sure, here. Sure, go ahead. Shoot. This is hey, Santana, a.k.a. Can You Dig It? <laughs> hey, Christopher, how you doing, brother? I love it. How you doing, brother? Chilling, man. Good. I just want to tell you, brother, man, I, I really enjoyed the conversation that you had with Ariel the other day, and I salute that you're so brave and you're sharing your information. And um, I just had one, actually not even a question. I was hoping that you can go more a little into um, what happened in the prisons um, when COVID happened in terms of religion and what they do, they, what they did to the inmates um, once COVID was locked down as far as, you know, like the Bibles and so forth. Yeah, how you were I, saying I'm, they took religion away. As, as, I'm not sure if you're aware of it. I met Ariel in prison. I've, um, I worked for the Department of Justice, the prison systems, um, doing medical for 13 years. And... Um, Oh, very good, very good. Yeah, like, listen, brother, the fact that you're a correctional officer, I have no idea how that's the case. You're the most articulate person. Like, God damn. <laughs> like, you don't have any correctional officer friends, do you? You don't have any friends. You know? I have a few. But you, you, you'd be surprised. You know, when it comes to the type of times that we live in now, oftentimes people have to go to uh, where they can make the most money for their family. And right. this is what I need for what I require. Gotcha. And oftentimes, yes, I do tend to piss off a lot of the older <laughs> minded folks of the mm -hmm. jail system yeah yeah it's the older generation that we end up fighting with how weird is that mm -hmm. well, i'll tell you what a lot of them are pretty freaking anti-faith in general like uh, i remember i was listening to two lieutenants one time in the uh the chow hall once and they were not very too kind about people going around and you know like just knocking on doors just to talk about jesus christ and it's like all right you know obviously we can crack our jokes i'm okay with that but the way they talked about it was almost like man they would love to punch these guys in their faces and it's like come on man <laughs> just to want to have this conversation <laughs> i mean albeit i understand the annoyance about especially like with uh certain face that i might disagree with coming to knock on my door especially if i'm busy but that doesn't mean that i should retaliate against them in such a very negative and visceral manner especially when you know that they have nothing and if all they can hold on to is religion and their faith you know that's that's it's it's cruel it's cruel <clears throat> to do that no and uh, I don't want to like go too much into my profession just for the sake of my own job. Yeah, for your job. No, I get it. Issue, <laughs> they would uh, pro probably use that against me. Absolutely no, so and I don't want to. I, I can anything. I can remark on certain COVID measures at the very least because that's not too. Um, I guess you'd say hard pressed for them to want to like. So keep down. so let me ask you this: Were they mandating the vaccines for the prisoners there? No, but they highly incentivized it. Um, even one point, operate bags of like you know commissary. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow! Not terribly big bags, no, no less. But you know, there was uh, that was a very short term thing, and it was just kind of talked about more than actually dealt with. And you know, obviously, not a whole lot was given. So you know, obviously, everyone's just kind of left to do and feel what they decide to do. And uh, a lot of these inmates would just choose out of fear, you know, one way or the other. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, I would tell them not to get it whenever I had contact with these people. I would let them know, hey, man, you know, it's just not worth trying it out. There's a lot of information I, I would highly suggest your family to look up. You know, there's a lot of people getting injured or dying or having heart attacks, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've gone it over, like, hundreds of times with these people. However, you know... Um, they still try to talk to these people and incentivize it, but oftentimes it's just left uh, highly suggesting. Have the you... only issue that I have are the masks. We still have to wear the masks, wow. and if they don't wear the masks, we have to give them disciplinary tickets for what? it, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. So, again, I personally do not enforce it because, again, it's, let's say there's inmates on the medical unit do I really want to suffocate the guy who's already struggling to breathe? Exactly. <laughs> like, do I really need to explain myself there? Wow. Or do I have to just continue the charade of, all right, well, hey, put your mask up as soon as my supervisor comes around. <laughs> Man, this is like, just so unbelievable. Again, like, I have to dance that line because, again, it is still my job. I do have to adhere to the orders, the policies to which have been passed down to me. I'm only just an officer. But at the same time, I have to do what I know is right in the moment as much as possible 
No, absolutely. And I commend you for that, for not being an asshole, because it's so easy to just do that. So that's that's very honorable of you. What about, um, are, you. are the inmates able to purchase Bibles? No, they have to request it with request slips. Hmm. Or they can have someone send it in. So essentially someone will buy it off of, uh, uh, let's see, uh, there's a specific store that sells it. I'm forgetting it off the top of my head. It's a, it's one of those chain stores, the library's big. And they usually often have like coffee shops inside. Oh, Barnes & Noble? Yes, that they have to go through Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble will send it into the facility. And um, ultimately, that's just how they get it. And it can't be hard copied. It can't be any books that talk about drugs, which is terrible because sometimes they'll literally treat that to the word and not exactly the point, which hmm. is, oh, well, someone is trying to get over their addiction. So they bought a book on how to, to you know, beat addictions from various celebrities that got out of all of that. Mm -hmm. And then they just look at the book and they're like oh this guy looks like he's partying and it's talking about drugs and then just deny <laughs> wow. so again you have that kind of mentality just for getting books now imagine that for bibles and stuff especially for people that don't have anyone that with money or they don't have any money or they're homeless but they're just trying to get themselves on their feet people who are really royally screwed up in their own life and you know made their own mistakes to the point where they know that it's just them and the hands that they have and the clothes on their back but not really because it's inmate uniform so it's not his it's the facilities okay. so as you can imagine this kind of thing is pretty detrimental to a lot of the inmates who are trying to find god yeah now with the covid uh when that hit they essentially just kind of they restricted visits almost entirely um uh, they would rarely do it um we're, we're finally getting back into that so that people can at least get back to having a, a minimum 30 minutes with their family every, you know, week or two or three, you know, depending. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely made it difficult because we're so short-staffed, but we make it work. Have you guys had um, an increased number of inmates having heart attacks or blood clots or anything like that? Um, yes and no. Um, most of the people seem to be just having a lot of stress related injuries like, you know, panic attacks and things of that nature. Um, has there been people that have seized up a few times, but not after the shots? And oftentimes, um, a lot of these inmates don't get the shots or they've already gotten it before coming to the facility. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we've had people that have passed away, yes, but not inside the jail since I've been working there. Okay. So I can't exactly speak to that. But I will say this, you know, when it comes to the COVID inmates, we, we have a very ridiculous way of handling the situation where we quarantine them all to a specific unit away from all the other inmates. The problem I have with that is now you're ten, essentially causing a, uh, a fissure, if you will, germ-wise. Yeah. So now all the people that are, uh, you know, safe, if you will, from the quarantined ones, now you have a bubble around them where they're not actually gaining any kind of a unity from the situation. Now the other ones that are gaining their immunity are now suffering through it. But then they, when they return, of course, they're still going to have a remainder of it on them some way, somehow, some, you know, it's going to get and affect the other ones. And then it's this constant cycle of people getting sick and then be sick and then sick and then re sick. And eventually we ride it out after, you know, months and months of dealing with it and putting up with it and the stress and having an overtime slots just to fill the position of man manning that post mm -hmm. you ever try to feed 80 different people all of which are different classifications you have to take at separately i had a daycare of a of a, a dinner chow that lasted two and a half hours mm. for 80 guys just because of the amount of people of different classifications that i had to pop out separately can you yeah. imagine the amount of gripe visceral hate anger and <laughs> wrath and threats that i had to deal with in that manner i can't imagine because <laughs> i know they already hate being there and then they got to deal with these ridiculous mandates and, and, and new regulations by buffoons. Because these people who are making these rules, they don't know what they're doing. They're just taking orders from someone else. So, and, and, and nothing is medically, um, is, it, nothing is um, medically um, sound in their decision making. Yes. So, you know, they're just, it's just people, the, the fact that people are even able to be in prison under those conditions is so inhumane. It's worse than a zoo. 
Yes. So, you know, the fact that you know that you have medical professionals in there that aren't saying, hey, you know what? These people, because they are still people, mm-hmm. need sunlight and they need fresh food. Yep. They need fresh water. Um, you know, they, they had an hour of out of cell time every day. I remember for uh, at least a, about a month. I remember in uh, last year when we had to deal with the whole COVID thing for all those 80 plus inmates that we had to deal with. Can you imagine that? And you didn't even get to go out into the rec yard. There you go. Exactly. I mean, do you have any idea how much the human body needs photosynthesis? <laughs> oh, I understand that. I, I brought that up with my administration, and oftentimes I get hit with inmate lover and everything else. Inmate lover! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, but you know, I, I've learned that this type of mindset exists uh, from when I was in the Marine Corps. It often generates itself whenever you have too much pride and this need to divide mentally away from a, a group of people, oftentimes for your profession. So when you're a Marine, obviously, or, or other form of military personnel, you tend to look at anyone that might be a potential threat to you, and then you kind of emotionally detach from that so that you can handle yourself in the situation as best you can the way you need to. Absolutely. Or at the very least, what you're taught. Now, in this facility, a lot of the older ones are taught to be, well, difficult to say the least. Yeah. Um, we have a newer superintendent now, and I, I won't remark too much upon him, but um, he seems to be having some good effects and changes in the jail, so I'm hoping that, you know, things will go well in the future. We're uh, hiring more people that are younger that have a more understanding because they've been through some of their own issues in life, and maybe right. not in the sense legally, but perhaps in the sense of their backstory and the family that they had and what trauma they might have faced or the family has faced so it's good to have a mix of different people from different backgrounds yeah absolutely well i won't um go into any more about the prison talk um because you know i don't want you to have to walk on any with that later thank and be, you and be, and be, and be, being a prison lover <laughs> yeah i know babe. But um, yeah, I wanted really to follow the tenets of my faith. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to ask you this: Is your mother still here with us? Is she still living? Yes, she oh. still lives in Virginia. Okay, because I wanted to ask you: Did you ever tell her that you recognized who the person was who assaulted you? Did you ever talk to her about it? I stopped talking to her when I was about. Let's see. I'd have to say 18 or 19 years old. Mm-hmm. It was after I got out of boot camp, and I had a, I spent time with a woman, and essentially she had a friend that she had, you know, living with her and my brother. They all stayed together at one point, and she's like, "Oh, this is a friend of mine." Yada yada yada. Buttered me up to the guy. Would offer me alcohol and eventually i found out from my brother when he went to drop me off that it was actually her boyfriend and i was like oh great you know she's still in her lying craze got it (laughs) (laughs) okay because i was just curious to know if she actually knew that tony podesta was the person who assaulted you i I thought that maybe you know she would you know want to know some information like that considering that she didn't know who the person was either I don't think she rightly cares, especially when you have uh, death threats at your phone. And when I was a kid, I didn't fully understand or comprehend why some guy is yelling at the other end of a phone back when we still had the wire phones mm. hanging on the wall. I remember that as a child and just handing that to my mother and just seeing her color from her face just kind of dissipate. You know, oftentimes people like this who are very selfish, self-centered and perhaps have gone through their own trauma in life in their childhood they tend to detach themselves personally from their own family so they can tolerate pains of reality. Themselves. So they fill they that hole with, with you know, oftentimes with love elsewhere. My mother would do that with her drug dealers, but also with the fact that she was a yoga instructor and a dance teacher. She, uh, you ever seen the episode of the Homer uh, of the Simpsons where Homer is like taking care of people's children more than his own? No, but. <laughs> I can, it's, it's very like that, though, but either way, yeah. no, I, um, I don't speak with her at all. Got you. Okay, I was just curious to know, and did, have you ever been curious about taking any action or, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, being more no, public I, about I, I it? I look at the situation, and I will call it out from my position. I have definitely online, back 
when Twitter was still freaking under whatever his name is. Uh, was it Jack Dorsey? The uh, yeah, I the, think that's uh, the name. Yes. So essentially, under his you know leadership, if you will, uh, I believe it was in 2017 or whatever. I had it Twitter, my first starting doing the whole twittering thing on a, uh, one of the first accounts that I've ever had, which of course they oftentimes get removed. So I had to start a new one. Mm-hmm. But point being is like every time I've ever called him out on Twitter, it gets uh, censored immediately and straightforward like i'll get banned for the posts so wow so uh, that twitter. was then you know and recently i haven't decided to take a jab i'll try it out and see if elon decides to ban me too <laughs> well he's not supposed to he's supposed to be this guy who has you know saved humanity just because he's allowing people to talk so we'll see but uh, well I'm telling again you he's we have to crap. break down the words billionaire bill bail ball it's obvious that when you're of that class, you're only allowed to be of that class because you're of that class to begin with. 100%. I keep trying to tell everyone that because everyone is acting like this man is some kind of savior of something. And it's like this man hasn't done anything for humanity. He's only yep. done his only his little fake science projects. I mean, he's really trying to convince people that he sent a car to space. You I know? remember watching that video and I remember as i was watching the live stream when it turned on it was in a freaking room it was in a it was in a room it was a blackened room and then suddenly they kind of like kicked everything on and it's just like a black like a flash of light and suddenly it's in space and it's just floating around and oh well and then you know it gets opened up and oh now it's just floating in space just kind of twirling away listen i'm just thinking to myself like i literally just saw you had it in a room you, you really can't undo what i just saw <laughs> listen it's like yeah exactly Straight lied to everybody on live stream no <laughs> listen it's ridiculous like listen this guy has had people anticipating the cyber truck that's supposed to be able to float on water but you haven't been able to get that down, and this is here on Earth where we kind of know how things run, uh, you know, in physics and everything. But you managed to send a car into space, and we're supposed to believe that? Yeah, but I just, you know, I'm going to spend many millions upon millions, possibly billions of dollars, just to send my fucking car into space. You know, I get that. You know, some people can try to argue and say, well, that's his show of his wealth and everything else. Like my, many other wealthy people, yes, like wealthy emperors. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of influence this man has? Is it truly his funds? Is it possibly someone else's? Is he just a face? Is he a very charismatic face? You or is it really it just, is. you know, exactly the owl that we see? You know that that's what it is. You know that he is just a character that they put in front of us to give us this idea. It's usually because of yes. their birthday It's and, and, and who they're um, related to. I mean, these aren't like real people. These aren't like me and you. They try to make it seem like, you know, he's just this uh, genius, this savant. No. And he's not. He's not. He's literally using Tesla's technology. He has the Tesla patents that were taken away that the government sealed and he's just using that information and building his energy cars that are self-parking and crashing all into people and stuff so and exploding because of lithium exactly you know when you have a national memo stating that you know it's a danger to drive these vehicles and that fire departments can't use water on the fire because not only would it endanger the individual in the vehicle if they're still alive and not cooking to death um it'll also damage and you know electrocute the firefighters trying to save them wow that is unbelievable that that's actually a warning and people are actually still getting them is that a warning mm-hmm. yeah he just said yeah. it's a warning Wow. You can look it up. Uh, I forget where, like, I had it saved on my phone at one point, an actual leak to one of the messages that they sent out nationally. But it was essential, like, like an email type of message sent out to all the different fire departments in the nation. So that way it's like, hey, look, we've learned from experience at this point. You're going to lose people if you try to save them the way that we normally save people in this situation. So, so you can need to try to adapt so and what, overcome. So what, did, did they give a precaution of what to use? To, to well, extinguish it? From, from, the under, uh, from what it seems like is uh, it, lithium tends to get very explosive when hit by water. It does. So I get hit by a very powerful hydrant on a giant set of batteries that got cracked. Now you have one. It's a, look, I'm an, I'm a, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was a munitions and explosive expert. 
okay, when you take one tiny charge and pack it behind a very big charge, you have an initiator and then the explosive. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying here? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is no different than taking a cap and some C4 and voila. Oh, Just man. take a hammer to it with that powerful hose from a firefighter. Yeah. At, no, this is insanity. And, you know, the cars are going to be completely useless during this uh, event that you're speaking of because it's going to be a complete power surge. So they're just going to all just stop working anyway. Mm-hmm. Ultimately speaking, it's, uh, and from what he also said, is like it also, it'll be so powerful of an electromagnetic pulse, it would give us a headache, a very like, seething headache. Almost like if uh, your head got smushed between, you know, two heavy objects. Now, um, I think that's just because of frequency and how the brain itself, it, it tunes into frequency, especially mm -hmm. the magnetic frequency of our world that we live in, that our beautiful creator has brought forth for us right now ultimately speaking um when it comes to uh perhaps these plans that these people have enacted ultimately speaking it's if you want to survive it the main two things is one you have to mentally put your trust and your fear 100 percent in this little basket and hand it over to the lord that's the only way that you're going to be able to consciously think in the moment with this terrifying event that you can't even imagine right now. And then trying to take it in in the moment and try to think on the second point that you need to focus on, which is getting out. So let me ask you this. Did your grandfather give you any idea of exactly what humanity should do in preparation for this? I understand that he said, you know, get to, you know, the highest horizon, the mountain areas and things like that. But Mountains and forests, he mentioned specifically because of the frequency of the signal from like, let's say the towers. Right. So Cell you towers are going to be bouncing off types of frequencies that will... Uh, cause people to be irate and violent mm -hmm. so if you could imagine that and then see that the cities themselves are inundated with some very um hi -hi, should i say rough cultures now causing friction all over you know you can look at los angeles chicago uh baltimore even you know there's a, a various different places that are you know great for a uh an explosive event, if you will. And then when you have an added bonus of a frequency that will cause people to now not only be very, um, very angry, but unable to control that anger like a normal human being, or I should say a normal man or woman, mm -hmm. because obviously it, it would bring you more to a animal instinct level where it's just act and react. Mm -hmm. and so that's also why it's like, I, I tell people it's better to leave and not to fight because there's a lot of people out there thinking, oh, well, it's going to be like the zombie apocalypse and you can set up a fort and have this beautiful little utopia. <laughs> you can have your little group and you can kill off the zombies and yada, 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 yada. People romanticize it, but the yeah, horror of the situation is you're dealing with people that are now mind wiped and trying to exist in a, I should say, bestial state of mind. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking that it's okay to just slay them or openly go out and slay them when you should probably just escape and wait till the signal dies down and try to save people afterwards. Yeah, yeah. and, and did, did he say that it, is this just designed for America or is this something that we're going to see the whole world dealing with? The whole world. How do you think they're going to depopulate people in time? This is so crazy. This is so crazy. So Christopher, what the hell is your plan? Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, well, I, um, I've, I have my tools and I have my things to keep me uh, safe and um, uh, free from getting hit by bullets. <laughs> so uh, I've found ways to um, be able to keep myself in a tactical mindset and I have my plans in order to escape to uh, some friendly areas that I know that I can, at the very least, try to restart things afterwards. Do you know what's supposed to happen with the sun during this event? It's going to be very dark. Almost almost like there would be no sun. They're going to utilize this almost religiously for themselves. Or at least, you know, those of the New World Order that are still alive. 
Yeah, that haven't run off to Xanadu. Mm. <laughs> At least, you know, running off to the uh, dumbs that they have beneath the earth and being trapped until they die. Can you talk a little bit more about the underground tunnels that you were talking about that are here? Yeah, so from what my grandfather was telling me is they existed before the flood and um, are actually essentially the ancient tunnels that the giants had at one point in time. The ones that we speak of biblically in the Old Testament. So apparently these things were a lot more intelligent back then, at least more so than we might understand in today's standards. But obviously, from what he was telling me is, you know, anyone is forced underground for a very long duration, like during the duration of the flood and the, you know, possible ice age after that for other people. Now, albeit, yes, we can say that from the story of Noah that everything turned out fine, but you can't imagine the rest of the world. We're only getting pictures from the various people who survived that God himself saved and carried through. We're not getting the full picture of what the rest of the world looked like at that point in time. We're only given a glimpse so we can remember it at the very least. Um. Do you know if these tunnels um, are connected to uh, over east? Do they? How do? How do? Do you know the span or a region? No, not really. I do know that you know. Oftentimes, uh, from what my grandfather told me, is these tunnels were one part built. You know, two parts just natural to what it was. Caverns mm-hmm. that existed all over the world that essentially they can just carve through, break through, and various airways they can essentially naturally go through because it was shaped that way. Mm-hmm. A lot of underground tunnels to which were just set that way, possibly even for the winds. Mm-hmm. Strange. <laughs> no, all of this is really, really crazy. And, you know, you kind of had my mind boggled because I thought we had a little bit more time. But considering that yes. he's saying that it's supposed to be next year. Yes. And I'm sure he didn't give you a specific month. Nope. But he just said it was going to be before I would turn 30. Oh, before you turn 30. I thought you were going to be 30 when it happened. <laughs> well, I hope for a little bit older than that. So at the very least, my children are not so small that I, I feel for their life and safety. Yeah. Um, but, you know, from what he was telling me that the estimate was, and again, he had to think about it in the moment because I remember asking him, when is it going to happen? When am I going to see it? And he had to stop and think about it. And I remember him looking up and then he just kind of like bobbed his head back and forth. And he's like, mm, perhaps by the time well, before you're 30, the very most. And so I'm 29 right now. Yeah. So obviously I'm going to be 30 in March. So Mm -hmm. perhaps it was more along the lines. He was giving me a general estimate of when it was supposed to be happening. Because obviously the main thing is that they figured out that this cycle happens. You don't know the hour and the day and the time because God keeps that hidden from us. And when was the last time he said that this cycle happened? Did he tell you when the last time it happened? No. The flood the flood hmm interesting wow well I gotta tell you Christopher you've given me a whole lot to have to consider because um I am out of time it sounds like um so I'm really trying to just figure out um what what is the what is the best advice what would you what do you want everyone to know um, to prepare for? What are the indicators um, that people should be looking for to know that it has begun? And especially in regards to this frequency that they're supposed to be hitting us with next year. So I would have to say is, number one, you have to put, as I said, literally your trust and your fear in God. I know it sounds strange, but imagine your mind being that frequency. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting immersed in a frequency It's going to make you want to hate and be angry. You already have have anger in your hearts because of the actual injustice in the world. Now you're finally giving an overwhelming urge to then commit. Now imagine in the moment it's going to be very difficult because you're not going to expect it. Most people are not going to expect it. So you have to be ready to essentially trust in the Lord in that moment because you're going to struggle with your own conscience, your own body struggle Mm -hmm. with the flesh in that very moment with the signal Mm 
because the signal itself is supposed to take over the body. It's not supposed to take over your mind. Oh, so, like Rwanda. Yeah, it's just like Rwanda. What happened in Rwanda? Um, the people kind of lost lost it, and they just started massacring each other, and then it just instantly stopped. So yeah. they've they've That's already exactly been, it. They've had this technology since the seventies. Yeah, yeah, no. They um, at least that's what my grandfather told me. Did he talk about any kind of radiation that we're going to be dealing with? Uh, he did not remark upon it, but then again, he just kind of wanted to tell me the gist, if you will. Mm -hmm. You can probably paint a picture, but try painting the whole world. It would take a lifetime. Yeah. At least for us. Absolutely. But anyhow, I uh, wish you guys uh, a blessed night. Yes. I know that everyone will be all right. Just trust you, me. Trust in the Lord. And when it comes time, you'll see it. I, I'm not going to try to give you an indicator because I'm going to tell you right now, what you're going to see, what you're going to feel is going to be indicator enough. I, on the next time that I talk with you, we can go on and talk about something that I saw when I was a child. And uh, at the very least, what that might mean for everybody. At well, least give, it depends on your faith after that. Give, give, give me a little bit of glimpse. You don't have to go into the whole story, <laughs> but it'll be a nice thing to end with just so people can have an idea what to look forward to and, and in Chris, closing. Oh. Hey, Chris, listen. Yes. Uh, man, you are a star. Like, your, your story is so compelling, brother. Yeah. Like, I don't watch anybody's stuff but mine because I'm Can You Dig It? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good vibe. I gotta tell you, brother, um, I, your, your, your story is compelling. I think you're awfully strong. I think you're awfully brave. Yes, you are. You are an amazing character to yes, have survived um, these circumstances and come across, man. You are, you are a, ph a phenomenal yeah, young man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very, very Thank impressed you. by you, young man. I'm very impressed by you. And I just wanted to tell you that. I give you a can you dig it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. But Christopher, just give us a little glimpse of what you saw when you were young. You don't have to go into detail because we can definitely pick it up on the next one. But it can just let us kind of have an idea of what we're how we're going to gear up for this next one. Acts two seventeen. Perhaps you can read it to them. X I don't like to paraphrase. X two seventeen. Yep. Okay. All right. I will find that. God bless and have a wonderful night. All right, Christopher. It was good talking to you. Till next time. <laughs>